Welcome to LFN News, a production of LFN Media, bringing you the latest in celebrity news, with specific analysis to keep you in the know of what is going on around you. If you are new to this channel, please subscribe, and hit the bell icon, so you never miss any of our upcoming videos. During the first two weeks of our Kelly Chicago trial, prosecution seemed like they had built a rather solid case, burying over 20 witnesses, all endeavoring to incriminate R. Kelly and his co-defendants. What many did not focus on, however, were the actual charges against him and his co-defendants. Although most prosecutors are extensively experienced and seasoned, being human, it still is very easy for them to lose focus on what the actual charges against the defendants are, especially in such emotional cases like these. And also given that prosecution is usually heard ahead of the defense, very often, they will assume they have built a strong enough case to be compromised, only to find that all the witnesses arrayed have later been discredited by defense. It is no wonder therefore, that prosecution lined up more than 20 witnesses, all with a different story that somehow incriminates R. Kelly and his co-defendants. It is surprising however, that with just five testimonies from defense, almost half of the prosecution's testimonies have already been greatly discredited, largely compromising their case. Defense testimonies were kicked off by former Chicago police detective, Christopher Wilson, who testified saying he is a longtime friend of former Kelly business manager Daryl McDavid. He testified under oath that in 2001, McDavid informed him that Mr. Kelly was being blackmailed by one of his merchandising agents. Wilson said McDavid wanted him to go with private investigator Jack Palladino to interview an alleged suspect in the blackmail in a bid to verify his allegations. Wilson didn't name the alleged suspect, but given the timing of the trip and previous testimony in the case, it was clear he was talking about Charles Freeman, who previously testified that Kelly and his team agreed to pay him to recover supposedly incriminating videotapes of Kelly. Wilson went on to say he wasn't present when Palladino questioned the alleged suspect, who he claims was also given a lie detector test for certainty. He testified that no one suggested during the trip that these tapes actually had any connection to abuse, which is currently being alleged as the supposed content of the tapes. During cross-examination, prosecutors asked Wilson if he had actually witnessed a crime such as blackmail. Wilson tactfully responded that had he witnessed any such crime, he would have had a duty to report it right away, as an off-duty officer. Private investigator Ronald Winters, who was once the personal assistant to the late defense attorney Ed Jensen, who represented Kelly in a related case in the 2000s, testifying about the number of times that former Kelly business manager Daryl McDavid brought alleged tapes of Kelly to Jensen's office. Winters said in the spring of 2007, while Kelly was facing charges in Cook County, McDavid on six or seven occasions brought in tapes of Kelly, allegedly indulging with different women, confirming that none of the women appeared to be underage. He claimed that, in one tape he saw in April 2007, Kelly was indulging with two women, one of whom appeared to be his wife. Defense attorneys appeared to be suggesting that Kelly was trying to buy back those tapes because they featured his wife, and not because they showed him indulging with other women. Tom Arnold, a former intern at Chicago Track Studio, was later called to the stand on behalf of former Kelly assistant Milton June Brown. Arnold testified that he began working for Track Studio in 1998, while Kelly was recording there, and then started working directly for Kelly in 2003. He said he routinely worked with petty cash at the studio, and would sometimes cash checks, as well as collect receipts for Kelly's business manager, Daryl McDavid, recalling a time he picked up up to $125,000 in cash. Arnold also testified that his job duties included driving people around at Kelly's request, and that it was common knowledge that drivers were not supposed to talk to Kelly's female guests. This appeared to be an attempt by Brown's attorneys to show that low-level employees were not privy to the details of Kelly's activities, and wouldn't have been aware of, or involved in a conspiracy as alleged. Then Mary Green's testimony went on to counter the timeline provided by one of Kelly's accusers Tracy, who had wrongly claimed in her testimony, that she met Kelly when she was 16. Mary Green, who was part of the planning committee of the Today's Black Woman Expo at McCormick Place in the late 1990s and early 2000s, testified that Kelly did not appear as a featured artist at the 1999 Expo, 
but did make a promotional appearance at the Expo in 2000. Kelly's defense team appeared to be countering claims from one of Kelly's accusers, Tracy, that she met him at an Expo in 1999, when she was 16, and that the two later began a relationship while she was still underage, accusing Kelly of abusing her dozens of times. In 2000, Tracy would have been 17, which is the age of consent in Illinois. Although during cross-examination by prosecutors, Green said she didn't know if Kelly might have attended the 1999 Expo, even if he wasn't a featured artist, Green went on to affirm organizers were not notified by security that he was there, which would have been a prerequisite, had such a high-profile artist made such an appearance. Now, with a good number of prosecutors' witnesses' testimonies discredited, R. Kelly's fan camp is yet again very optimistic of the progress in the R. Kelly's Chicago trial, as another good number had already discredited themselves earlier on, when their very own contradictions from the cross-examinations gave them in. Darlene says. This case was already going R. Kelly's way, even from the very beginning. All the witnesses that prosecution arrayed were not credible and it was clear that the jury would not consider their testimonies to influence their ruling. The role that defense has played now however, is also critical to show that there is more that prosecution had cooked up with the intention of keeping R. Kelly in jail but they won't succeed. They have been exposed with the truth and indeed, R. Kelly shall be freed with the truth. Free R. Kelly Luke says this Chicago trial should be looked at solely based on the facts of this case. It would truly be unfair for Mr. Kelly's chances of being acquitted from this case to be ruined, just because he is unfairly found guilty based on lies and dubious actions. There has not been any definite proof, proving that R. Kelly is guilty of the charges against him in this trial, and the defense team has further done a good job discrediting the false testimonies by some of the witnesses. If the jury fails to be objective to see that these are nothing more than mere allegations against the R&B King because of his status, then they will have made an unfair judgment just like the New York jury. We are praying for you or Kelly. That's all we had for you today. Please let us know in the comment section below whether you feel that defense has done a good job so far, trying to clear or Kelly of the allegations against him. We value your honest opinion. Thank you for watching LFN News, a production of LFN Media, giving you another view of issues at hand. To get notified whenever we post a new video, subscribe to this channel now and hit the notification icon. And remember to give us your comment on the subject matter below.